to read for us today? Sure. Cool. Thank you. From day 16. Yeah. So standing for the right without egotism. I hope I said that right. One source of difficulty in dying to self is that we may confuse our desire for what is good and right with our desire to have our own way. In many controversies, uh, important values are at stake and people are passionately committed to each side. That is as it should be. But more often than not, the contempt and anger that emerges in the conflict manifests the will to have our way. Families, churches, communities, and sovereign nations become embroiled in deadly conflicts that would disappear or be resolved, but for the relentless will to have our way. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, Jesus said, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life or soul loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to eternal life, to life eternal. John 12, verses 24 to 25. Does dying to self mean we will be without feeling? Far from it. Apprentices of Jesus become disturbed about many things and passionately desire many things. But not getting their way does not disturb them. To accept with confidence in God that we do not have to get our own way releases us from the great pressure that anger, unforgiveness, and the need to retaliate impose upon our lives. This by itself is a huge transformation of the landscape of our lives. It removes the root and source of the greater part of human evil in our world. Jesus commanded not to resist him who is evil, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. Matthew chapter 5, verses 39, that's a paraphrase. Such remarkable teaching presupposes that we have laid down the burden of having our own way. We can't begin to even understand it, except from a posture of self-denial based on the confidence and experience of God's all-sufficient pr presence in our lives. But to step with Jesus into the path of self-denial immediately breaks the ironclad grip of sin over human personality and opens the way to a fuller restoration of radical goodness to the soul. It accesses supernatural strength for life. See Psalm 84, verse 7. When I first began contemplating death to self, I nearly became morbid about it. But as I meditated on scripture passages about this topic, I noticed how each also spoke of being enabled to live a new, eternal kind of life. The grain of wheat dies, but then it bears much fruit. Disciples of Jesus hate or prefer God's life over their life, but get to keep their life for eternal life. See John chapter 12, verses 24 to 25. Those who are crucified with Christ and no longer live have Christ living in them and live a life in their body by the faith of the Son of God. Compared to my decrepit faith, see Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I found that death to self occurs in small steps. Every day I volunteer for small, uh, small deaths to self, and I experience a little more of that fruit-filled eternal kind of life from above, right here and now on this planet. After a while, a selfless life becomes to make sense, mm -hmm. begins to make sense. It seems silly to repay evil for evil. What good does that do? Wouldn't it be smarter not to fight fire with fire, but with a shocking amount of water? Life becomes more pleasant and interesting. The burdens get lighter and lighter. As I surrender, all is given to me. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into my lap. Luke 6, verse 38. So today's experiment says, reflect on situations that bring out the worst sort of self-promotion in you. Do they occur when you're around people who put you down, who are bossy, who hold opinions opposite yours, who look up to you? What could you pray about those situations now while you're not in the middle of them? What could you pray about the people usually involved, especially to will good in their lives and move toward conformity with Christ? 